Hello everyone, welcome back to Days of Professional and today I am here with Mrs. Sandhya Herman who is the Deputy Director of Social Services. How are you doing here Mrs. Herman? I'm doing very well, thank you. How are you? I'm also doing good, thank you for asking. Uh, and uh, thank you for taking the time out today to come and talk to me and uh, yeah, let's get straight into the questions. What would you say initially drove you to join the social services? Uh, so I was doing, uh, my background is that of a researcher and I was doing public child welfare research at UC Berkeley. I was directing their research program there and we were researching sort of the impact of workplace culture and climate on social workers and how they perform their jobs. But it was a step removed from the clients, uh, the people that they were serving. And I really wanted to get closer to that. So that's what uh, you know, the desire to get closer to service delivery is what drove me to social services. And that's where I am right now. Mm -hmm. And I see that you have a bachelor's degree in science and sci bachelor of science in psychology and a master's in research and experimental psychology. Uh, if you could let me know the ways that your degree have helped you with your job other than like the knowledge factor. Sure. And I actually have a doctorate in experimental psychology, but I think, uh, uh, my my degrees, particularly the psychology degrees, have given me a framework uh, with which I can approach the, the world and its problems. I think my training as a social scientist makes me ask a lot of questions, sort of why, you know, I question why a lot, helps me frame questions in a, in a testable way, and then also mm -hmm. guides me sort of in the direction of finding data that might help answer the question. Mm -hmm. And how would you say psychology is an integral part to working in social services in general? I think it gives you, j just the point I made earlier about the framework, I think it gives you a framework for understanding human behavior. And to me, that is essential in any job, you know, unless you were living in a <laughs> cave somewhere and didn't have to interact with uh, other fellow human beings. I think uh, a psychology, uh, some, some uh, kind of background in psychology does come uh, into into use. I know in the particularly in the corporate workplace, uh, there's a lot of focus on the different kinds of intelligence and emotional intelligence, and you know all of that work comes out of the field of psychology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what do you, what would you say are some other than like having some background in psychology? What would you say mm -hmm. is some course to work which you would recommend for someone to take when they go into social social services? Sure. So social services is pretty broad. Uh, it incorporates at least, and it, it varies by county, but in my county, it incorporates kind of the Department of a Adult and Aging Services, so providing services for the elderly who may be homebound or unable to care for themselves, child welfare, which is basically the state ensuring that your child, children are protected from abuse, neglect, abuse and neglect. Um, and then, you know, we also have eligibility workers who do or certification for programs like SNAP, where, like the, the food assistance program. Mm -hmm. uh, at our county, we also have veteran services uh, as part of social services. So really the array of areas it is, is very broad. Uh, but I think uh, a, lot of so, a lot of people uh, go into the field with degrees in social work, uh, psychology, like we talked about. You could be a sociologist, you could have a public policy background. Um, and then, uh, especially in the field of eligibility, you know, where they're certifying like people who might get uh, food stamps and uh, other kinds of basic services to keep them afloat. A lot of times, uh, heavy training is provided by the agency. And I would say initially, our workers coming in don't even have a bachelor's degree. So it's a whole, whole you know, like a variety of uh, skills and training that you might have. Mm -hmm. And I like how we talk about like how other fields could be applied to uh, the, your field. So like you said, like people from the public sector come, so psychologists, sociologists. So yeah. in that way, are there other fields which you could go through if you have a degree in like social services or a degree in psychology? Yeah, not, not so, so social services is the field. It's not the degree. Uh, but in a psychology and especially with the research degree, absolutely, I think you can get into many fields. Uh, you could get into the tech field. You know, there's a lot of user uh, uh, user research that goes on. So a lot of researcher friends, I know even people with an anthropology background go into the tech field, uh, right? People can get licensed and become a clinical uh, social worker that you would deal with children or adults who have uh, mental health issues. 
if you had uh, a degree in social work, that's the same thing. You could either become a practicing social worker, you could become a caseworker, you could uh, become uh, a licensed clinical social worker and provide counseling. So there are lots of, uh, I think, options. It doesn't bind you to that one field for life. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I think it's a pretty versatile degree and I've found that so in my case. And uh, what would you say are some key skills which are required to be successful uh, as a social worker or as a person in the social services field? So I think a, a desire to help. Uh, I, I think it's really about uh, wanting to strengthen the social safety net, uh, which is uh, relatively weak in the US compared to uh, other developed countries. Uh, I think a desire to serve in the public uh, sector. Uh, and I think a desire to make sort of public programs strong uh, and, and being data informed and things like that. So I think all of those passions would be very useful if you wanted uh, to have a career in, in social service. Mm -hmm. And along with his interest, what skills would you need to really be successful? Uh, skills? I mean, I think obviously, in my case, I feel like my strong research skills and analytical skills have been very helpful. I think your people skills and your uh, ability to kind of navigate tricky situations is important. Uh, we deal in a, uh, it's a very pro-labor environment, so it's a very political environment, so I think kind of knowledge of how to uh, navigate through, you know, working with labor unions and uh, uh, issues like that, that's, that's, that's important. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and generally, you know, I think with pretty much all jobs these days, sort of multitasking, juggling multi multiple projects, learning how to manage your time. Those are all skills that I think you, but again, those are skills I think that will probably help you get successful in any job. Mm -hmm. And what would you say are some things which have surprised you when you initially came at your position, in your position? I think not so much this position, but I was new to the field of child welfare. Uh, and it was definitely kind of surprising, you know, in a, in a bad way, just the level of abuse and neglect that uh, children face. But then I think it, the, the, the kind of plus, the positive side to that uh, was recognizing the role that a robust uh, safety system plays, right? Having uh, the, the state monitor the well-being of children and ensuring that children aren't abused and uh, neglected. That was definitely a plus. But yeah, I was surprised. Uh, saddened i would say by mm. yeah how uh yeah ab about uh, the, the kind of abuse that exists right. abuse and neglect yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how would you say your previous experience at pwc as a manager and as director of mm -hmm. research and evaluation at uc berkeley helped to prepare you for your position in, the so in so social services and if you can give me an example of how it is yeah sure so i think pwc was really great for me in that it gave me an opportunity to learn uh, to really apply the skills that I had learned in grad school, but then also kind of showed me how there were shortcomings in that and that, you know, really the workplace exposes a lot of gaps that you may have in your education that you don't really discover till you're in the workplace. Um, I really love the focus, uh, given that it was a private sector on efficiency and innovation. Um, and I think that was really, uh, you know, a very valuable learning for me. Um, I felt you really had to be sort of, you know, on top of your game to to get the job done. Uh, but what I wasn't crazy about was the focus was largely on the, the bottom line. And that's why I wanted to move away uh, sort of back into an academic setting. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that was PwC. Uh, and then at... Uh, uh, at, at UC Berkeley, I think just being a research direct, uh, director, uh, I, I, I think just, you know, kind of uh, the, the importance to st importance of staying informed, staying abreast of the most current research, uh, and being on top of your game in a different kind of way. You know, I think uh, uh, in academia, uh, titles don't matter as much as sort of, you know, your critical reasoning, your data, the data you have to support your hypothesis so in that sense kind of levels the playing field mm -hmm. and that was a that was um yeah a great great experience as well and yeah what do you say are some responsibilities that you hold as direct deputy director of social services 
so I manage uh, a department that has about 120 staff and we have different units. We have a unit that uh, you know, creates uh, staff development and training. I have a unit that does research. So there are different, so it's, it's about uh, uh, managing the units. It's about setting the vision in terms of, you know, how do we actually demonstrate that the services that we're offering uh, to uh, vulnerable clients uh, and, and uh, residents of Santa Clara County are effective. Uh, so it's, there's, you know, definitely some strategic planning, there's visioning, there's day-to-day -day management. Uh, again, given that it's a very uh, uh, pro-labor environment, sometimes there are issues that come up, you know, with sort of managing, uh, managing personnel. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I would say that's how my day is spent and in a lot of meetings. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what are really some challenges which you face on a daily basis and how are you able to overcome them? Uh, I think just having, you know, sort of uh, multiple priorities, many irons in the fire, as it were, that's always uh, challenging. Uh, uh, I think sometimes we have uh, uh, plans and strategic direction that changes. So trying to, you know, uh, also manage shifting priorities. Uh, I think the way I try to do it is uh, I'm a big list person. I like to make lists of things that I'm trying to get done in a week or you know, in a day. And if I get through three of them, my lists are long, but, you know, I recognize <laughs> that I'm not going to get through all of it. So prioritizing, I think, is is an important thing because, uh, you know, you can't spend all your time doing everything well. And I think you have to discover, you know, there are some, or you have to kind of decide that there are some things you'll do less well and be okay with it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think those, yeah, those kinds of decisions help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you could uh, describe some of the projects that you are currently working on. Mm -hmm. uh, there's actually one very exciting project that we're working on. It's uh, a universal ba basic income uh, pilot for former foster youth. So one of the things that research and studies across the nation have shown that foster youth aging out of care. So these are uh, kids, well, they're not kids, uh, youth who are between the ages of maybe or 24 and older, as they age out of care, there are very few support services that are available to them, mm -hmm. right? So they hit that cliff and that sort of age cliff, and then there's nothing else that the county can do for them. So this mm -hmm. universal basic income uh, program uh, was providing $1,000 a month to uh, foster youth who are aging out of care for a period of uh, 18 months. So that's an exciting project because uh, it's really, you know, providing services for youth who may not have a strong family system. And I think lots of people, you know, can reach, like fall back on parents when they hit a rough spot or loving aunts and uncles and friends, but foster youth don't often have all those support uh, networks. Right. So this is a, a program that, yeah, hope will hopefully uh, demonstrate some good good uh, impact and might be one that we can continue. And universal basic income is something that I think, I don't know if you're familiar, but Andrew Yang brought it up as yeah. one of his, uh, uh, mm -hmm. sort of, you know, as a, his, his campaign platform, the idea that there are so many technological advances that are coming in future decades that maybe a lot of work will be made obsolete, right? right? So what, we, what, what will people low skilled workers or people without a strong education, what and how will they live and eat, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think just that concept itself is very intriguing, but we're applying it to a small segment of the, the, the populations we serve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, with the, with the increase of like technology and technological advancements is more structural unemployment, which overall leads to the higher net unemployment mm -hmm. rate. Mm -hmm. So that's why yeah. I think I agree with you in the sense that uh, universal basic income can be a good thing just because it can I support think, people even when right? they might not have right. the means to. And so right. them being homeless, they could support and provide the family or themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, moving on to the next question, what are some common misconceptions about the so social services and what what were the reasons that they may have, like mm. the reason they were able to come through? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I think, uh, uh, one of the things, again, and when, even when I was in the private sector, I think this is something I've heard that people who avail of the, the safety net are takers. Mm -hmm. I know even when Mitt Romney was uh, campaigning to be president, that was the, the, the kind of dichotomy he presented, that there were people who created jobs 
-hmm. and created wealth. And then there were people at the bottom of the ladder who were takers. And I think, you know, that's a very black and white kind of uh, presentation. I think in reality, we all go through valleys mm -hmm. and peaks in our lives. And I think it's very important to have a strong social safety net that provides for people when times are hard. Uh, you know, so and, and, and I think the thing to know is that people availing of social services have jobs, they have families, and sometimes and oftentimes there are many kind of systemic failures and factors right, that have kept people down, like there's the multi-generational nature of poverty and, and you know, with the, the death of George Floyd, there's been a lot of focus on systemic racism, uh, which does exist and affects some you know, segments of our population much more than others. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. I think that is a big um, misconception when it comes to like the poor and uh, uh, social services. Uh, why have they arisen? I think America has this uh, this story, right? Of uh, like the whole uh, Abraham Lincoln, uh, what's it, log house to white white house, log cabin to white house, yeah. story, right? Like if you just work hard enough, you, you, you can do anything. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's why then you attribute any kind of misfortune in people's lives to their, their personal failings, right? Mm -hmm. They're less than, and that's why they're poor or they're suffering or, yeah. Right, right. They don't, like some people don't take into account that they may have been, some of these may have been caused by the system itself and not just because they are on the top. Right. So there are multiple factors working against them, whereas somebody yeah. else might only have a certain number of factors. So, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. absolutely. And what would you say is the key to communicating with the public? Uh, when you say communicating with the public, say a little more, what do you mean? Uh, would, like about the job, about the role? Yeah, about the roles, like about the roles and how to make the your the social service less menacing because I know that people are very hesitant to call social services or child welfare services they, because either they think that their kids might be taken away from them or they'll be yep. taken away from the kids. So yeah. how are some ways where you can like, how do you say, make as a make, the industry or the country, mm -hmm. the agency less medicine. Thank you. Yeah, no, that, that helps me understand this a little better. I think, uh, I, I know in our county and in California, there's a huge focus on, uh, on, on prevention, on upstream services. So providing for children and families, vulnerable children and families before they hit the child welfare system. So, you know, obviously the, the thinking is that if you take away a child from an abusive situation, that's already X number of years of uh, uh, abuse or suffering that have gone into the child's life. And so what you can do in terms of helping at that point is probably much uh, less compared with, you know, upstream prevention, maybe when someone was pregnant or when the, the child was really, you know, there's a lot of research now on the importance of pre-K and uh, early literacy. Mm -hmm. So I know the focus has been on trying to shift funding uh, so that people uh, can uh, avail of services earlier on and develop sort of healthier, stronger uh, families and receive the services that they need, as opposed to them hitting like the juvenile justice system and then right uh, being provided services because that's already too late. Uh, I would say, you know, that I, uh, I understand that I understand the public sort of hesitation in reaching out to child welfare services or, uh, you know, historically kind of the, the roots of social work have been kind of troubling. It was a lot of uh, very, you know, well-meaning uh, white Christian ladies who wanted to help uh, what they thought of as, you know, uh, poor black and brown children. And so mm -hmm. a lot of times, mm -hmm. you know, even Native American children were taken away from their families and put into boarding schools where they su suffered horrific abuses. So I, I think, you know, I know when when um, students go through social work training and and social work uh, school, they, that's part of their uh, their training. So I think, you know, the field has been trying to make a lot of changes, I think, with the prevention focus um, by recognizing that, you know, even the, the, the profession itself may have been causing some of the the kind of ills that it said it was trying to solve mm -hmm. uh, but i would say you know that uh, citizens have their rights and they, they that they should call you probably will get a social worker who is ethical and wants to keep families intact because that is 
sort of the focus, uh, you, you know, the, there is a recognition that even that unless the child is uh, in danger of dying in the house because mm -hmm. the abuse is so severe right. that uh, social that social workers, the caseworkers, will work with the family and try to keep the you know family intact and try to provide services and then obviously the parents or the caregivers will have to you know let's say you have to go to drug counseling then you have to do that and if you don't do that then the child may be taken away from you so they have to recognize that you know the, I, I think the mind shift has uh, changed mm -hmm. over the last few mm -hmm. decades uh but yeah it's still not an easy uh sure. decision yeah. to make yeah most definitely yeah. And is, yeah. is this a job where you have to constantly keep on learning new material? In a sense, are you required to learn new things and new policies on a daily basis? Yeah, I think there are policy regulations that come out from the states and the feds that you need to stay on top of, that you need to understand like, oh, how does this impact what we do? And you have to interpret and apply it to your work. Uh, in my in my role, because you know I have a couple different domain areas that I uh, kind of focus on with research and staff development and policy. So I, I try to, I, I, I like to read. Uh, I enjoy reading. So, you know, I try to stay abreast of like research literature uh, uh, and uh, yeah, business journals mm -hmm. on effective management. And yeah, I think if you're a learner, you can learn in any job, in any situation. But sometimes some of that is intrinsic. Mm -hmm. right? And this kind of follows into my next question. How often yeah. does government policy affect you? Because you are funded by local, state, and central governments. So all the time. All the time. Like yeah. every day? Yeah, every day. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, most of our funding, I would say, uh, you know, we're, we're a, a highly reimbursable uh, agency. What that means is for the money that we spend on services, on overhead, on admin costs, mm -hmm. uh, the state of California, uh, the Department of uh, Social Services, you know, uh, reimburses us uh, oh. to a very high rate. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are really, uh, our role in child, child welfare and in adult and aging uh, is we are doing uh, the state's work. The state sets the mandates, the state sets the policy, and we are the ones who kind of enforce it and do it. So a lot of pretty much uh, all of our funding comes from states and 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 some from the feds. Uh, what what is uh, not ma given by the state or the feds comes from our county general fund. And because Santa Clara County is a wealthy county because of the tech industry mm -hmm. and of course you know home values. Are right. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it makes the county pretty wealthy, and uh, mm -hmm. so we have funding that comes uh, in. Uh, we have some funding that we receive from the general, uh, and really, you know, we have some latitude. What that means is there's some latitude in terms of creating new programs and initiatives that we might want to take on to improve the lives of children and families. But most of our work is kind of set by the state. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Mm -hmm. And how would you say your work-life balance in the sense there's a lot of work that comes home or is it like country cut to nine to five? I would say it's a government job. So it's more nine to five. There are, you know, it's a, it's, I, I would say I have great work-life balance. Uh, I work a 40 hour week, most, most weeks, sometimes more, sometimes less. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, I think a government job comes with a lot of great uh, benefits and a good pension, which I think is hard to find in the private sector. Probably not the high pay and all of the stock bonuses and things like that. Mm -hmm. but I think security and fulfillment in, in different ways. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what would you say are some course of high school students could take to get a better understanding of the social services and what yeah. websites or books should they read? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, uh, psychology, uh, substance abuse, uh, uh, substance abuse journals, if they're interested in those, public policy journals, uh, if, you, know, you know, if you want to do readings in economics, sociology, social work, those would all be good areas to explore. Mm -hmm. uh, there are lots of uh, great sort of peer review journals that have, uh, you know, good, good uh, articles and research studies. I think Psychology Today is a pretty popular journal with, you uh, mm -hmm. With, with articles and information shared in a readable way without going super in-depth into the research. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and uh yeah those are all the questions that i had for you today thank you so much for joining oh, us oh wow we we whipped through it <laughs> yeah we went through that really quickly uh thank you for coming on here today and talking to mr sermon uh if you have any questions i'll leave my email down below and uh yeah till next time peace okay thank you